Hello there folks, it's a telefunken and I'll tell you about that in a minute, but first I want to tell you my mum was in the hospital. Uh, it's all still a bit exciting, she's home now and she's doing okay, but uh, she borrowed my iPad, which meant I couldn't make one of those Reddit comments videos which you guys seem to like a lot. So while the iPad was gone, just got it back, uh, I found this, this group on uh, Facebook that is mostly aimed at the Asian market, uh, mainly countries like Indonesia and India and such, where they sell and buy secondhand audio. Now, there's loads of people there who are not as fortunate as Westerners like me. And some of the audio you see will be in a pretty rough shape. Um, there's no way, being a socialist myself, I want to shame those people. So let it be very clear that even though some of the audio looks worse for wear, I'm not trying to make fun of those people who are just trying to make a buck or trying to make stuff work for them with their means. But it is kind of interesting for us to look at the kind of audio they have there because much of it you never really see in uh, Western Europe or uh, the Americas. Um, and also it is sometimes kind of fun to see what they've cobbled together in order to make it work or the state stuff is in and somehow it's still producing sound. Um, it surprised me some of the very Western brands like Telefunken you see there, uh, but then it's very different equipment like this receiver here. I've never seen it before. It's a beautiful looking AM FM receiver and uh, I have no idea what it sounds like or if it was built in Germany where Telefun Telefunken is from or in uh, Asia, but it, it is a bit reminiscent of old JVC receivers as well. So it could be an Asian product. I really like the way it looks though. Beautiful uh, green light and uh, the big Telefunken logo and the two-tone going on. It's a really cool machine. It's the first image we got. We got loads of them. It's from this kind of equipment to cheap rack systems to uh, portable radios. And this group isn't um, uh, administered very well. So uh, sometimes you get completely random stuff that has nothing to do with audio, which is kind of fun to leave in every now and then. So there's going to be some of that as well. So Telefunken first. Let's go to the next image. It's the back of the Telefunken. Uh, where does it say it's made? Does it say anywhere? Oh, Toronto, Ontario. Interesting. Now, as far as I know, there were not many Canadians in this group, but maybe this was an exception because I actually know the group because a Dutch guy is selling record players there. It's got a magnetic and ceramic cartridge, uh, phono input, your auxiliary, auxiliary and DIN and RCA for tape. Pretty awesome looking machine, if you ask me. Here's a yen made, yen made, it needs to be on there twice, ST, oh, that doesn't work, ST999 radio cassette recorder. With super bass sound, it has two what looks like woofers. I'm sure they're full range units, but that's probably going to be not a lot of highs. Uh, kind of cool looking device, not too big, and it looks like you can um, detach the speakers. And it has ultra super loudness because otherwise it's not loudness enough, obviously. Uh, this one's also interesting. It's a, a Pioneer CT800, as you can see here. Now, I looked at these buttons and I was like, is that original? And then I googled it and it turns out, yeah, it is original. I've never seen this deck before. I'm not sure if it's also available in uh, Europe, but it's a pretty cool looking machine with some really mean VU meters. I like that it has these uh, equalizer or um, bias settings here for ferro and chrome tape on the top. I think it's the equalizer for playback because it has bias down here. You got your peak and VU meter settings. It's a really cool machine. I'm just not sure if I would like the way to to control this, pause to the left, start to the right and stop. You got your record, maybe that's a push button. And your, I like the winder lever, that makes sense. Also there's a, a door open here, so I guess this door opens like so, which is fancy as heck. Also apparently the fan that this person probably really needs is in 3D. Intex, now I know Intex from something completely different. Let me see what Google gives me. Intex, yep. That's what I know Intex for, from pools and inflatable mattresses. I'm sure it's not the same company. Uh, this is probably in India because of Tata in the background. Uh, two different Intex speakers. They don't look very promising, but they are, uh, I think, multimedia speaker system. It says, okay, tested here. Other speaker here. It's probably some sort of shop because here on the top left, you see something that's reminiscent of a subwoofer. Um, but yeah, Intex speakers, I have no idea what they are two ways. And uh, they look very similar, but not quite. <laughs> this is an interesting setup. So we got our Kenwood stereo, props for the toy cars, by the way, and a Zephal Bluetooth speaker, I assume, and some uh, CDR. 
So can we little stereo with mini disc and I guess a CD changer or some CD medium thing? Then there's one modern iOS speaker with a new logo, a Yamaha computer sub and another iOS speaker. So someone cobbled this together and hopefully made it work. Um, yeah, interesting, interesting combination of, of components. These, are, these stereos are pretty good actually. If you have them with the original speakers, they sound pretty decent. Nice for a bedroom setup. It's got a uh, mini disc indeed and a line input on the front. It's, it's pretty cool. Uh, I don't hate this stuff actually. These are Pioneer speakers. Yep, these are Pioneer speakers. Now, I feel like these are original with these weird um, covers. These could be okay. They're like three and a half way speakers, two woofers, a tweeter and a mid range. Um, but they look really ugly. Also, they've been in a pretty moist climate with all the mold going on. They're the Pioneer S something RS3 TB. LR, um, yeah, uh, engineered by Pioneer, made in Malaysia. So this could indeed be, this is the right speaker by the way, this could indeed be the, uh, right, right, I'm seeing it twice now, the, uh, the kind of Pioneer that you don't get in Europe because that's usually made in Japan. Now this is interesting. This is a, is a Pro FX surround setup. I really like the way it looks. You got your fronts, you got your subwoofer, you got nice rears that are sort of uh, bi-directional, which should work if you place, place them correctly, and um, a, a, a center speaker. This looks like it could be okay, but what's funny is how these fronts are not quite floor standers, not quite stand mounts, and also not quite tower speakers. So it's a size that doesn't work at all. But uh, yeah, uh, Pro FX, never heard of it, but it looks like something like Altex or Tangent or something, like something okay-ish. Um, wouldn't be surprised if these sounded half decent. This stuff I love. I love the little stereos that look like serious stereos but they're tiny. So you got your Sony two-way speaker system and your little Sony rig. So these are separate. You got your ST38 for the tuner, TA38 for the amp as an equalizer and a TC38 for the cassette deck. Now I don't know if the amp and the equalizer are the same thing it may be because they only have one model number the equalizer doesn't have its its own uh, model number and your balance fader is on the equalizer little five band equalizer lowest one is 100 hertz so you know the speakers are tiny and it's got 240 watts sure downhill mm -hmm. uh, but um, yeah i like the fine tuning as well it, it, I just really like the aesthetic of these little rigs and the, the speakers look pretty cool as well with their square woofers which has no redeeming qualities, it just looks awesome. Sometimes there's something round behind them if they're really cheap. Oh, the whole system is called FH3 so now I'm curious if they are actual separates. They are probably connected with ribbon cables. A razor! Happens all the time. A stainless steel multi-groomer even. This is awesome. It's a little portable radio by Sony Really cool design, looks rugged with the green green um, uh, dial. Just a really cool little design uh, with your three bands and your memory light, whatever that may be. Uh, and you got your tone controls and the loudness, which gives me the idea that this thing is probably sounding pretty okay. They cared enough at least to give you some tone control. So it's probably made to reproduce music reasonably well. American plug, but I think they have those in India too. Uh, dial lock so you can't change your tuning. Looks like a really smart little device this Sony. I, uh, I'm really uh, liking what I'm seeing here. There's your dial again, looking awesome. Here's another Sony, it's the Stereo Music System HMK419. Now Sony never did anything starting with HMK in uh, the Netherlands where I am and I'm pretty sure the same goes for, um, for America. This looks like Sony, this door. The record player doesn't look like Sony at all. All. So I think this is a an Asian market machine. Now these are really cool cassette controls. You got record, stop, play, rewind, record, rewind, play, stop. Oh, eject must be somewhere else because there's not enough buttons here. So I don't really know how that works. Oh yeah, a little record player, a little cassette player. And this is the top. Could be a BSR or something. Oh, here we can see it. Stop, eject, fast forward, play. Oh, it's got no pause. Huh. Interesting. I think this is a BSR record player actually. I don't think this is a, a, a Sony made one. Uh, you got your storage for your cassettes here, which I adore. Uh, it's on a chair and uh, yeah, it's, it's probably not great, but it looks cool. So these to me look like mm, 
reasonably good speakers. And then I saw this Bluetooth. Now, I have a pair of Edifier R1700 BT speakers here. They are 140 pounds, sorry, dollars. They're awesome. They're actually really good. So some, some Bluetooth speakers can be pretty okay. These are the FND, FAD, I'm not sure what they are, but there's more images. FAD, I think, T60X, optical in, audio in, your power and your audio out. Well, this is that giveaway that it's not too fancy. These terminals you don't see on serious speakers. So they are uh, computer multimedia speakers. I'm not sure. Um, but they have all this going on. You've got your microphone volume, your echo, and a USB input and your Bluetooth controls. Um, yeah, actually the English looks pretty good. Um, it's got NFC and everything. These are probably pretty practical, but I think they're more meant for karaoke than for serious music listening. But they look pretty nice. You've got, you've got some nice looking woofers. Lovely soft dome tweeter. I wouldn't be surprised if some sci-fi removal or a, or a passive resonator, but I don't think so because there's a baseboard. Wouldn't be surprised if these were not completely horrible, but it was a bit of a surprise for me that they had this going on. And the, the buttons look really cheap, so yeah. It's a Sanyo radio. Now, I love portable radios with VU meters. There's something about them. Um, just a really cool radio with your tweeters and your woofers. Uh, this looks dented in, like the, the, the dome, and I wonder how, because it has the, the grill in front, but really cool looking Sanyo radio. Here's the top. It's got an edit button, which is probably for sound on sound. Uh, you got your sleep setting, a dial light, loudness. Yeah, of course, your wide stereo, because that was a thing. Supports of chrome tapes, automatic level control, on and off, a line in, a microphone in, and a phono in. Um, Awesome. I would grab this if I found it at a thrift shop or so. I really like the way this looks. Not so much for this one. This looks like such plastic crap. It's ridiculous. Someone was hungry and started eating this. The detachable speaker system. And all honestly, I think it got really hot. Look, this is all molten. Now, in these countries, this could just be due to the sunshine because it's super hot there. Um, this is probably not functional looking at the, the state of these, these knobs, but it's got auto reverse. It's got one recording thing and one non-recording thing. Uh, you've got your battery indicators, a little equalizer, high-speed dubbing. Actually quite a practical little device, to be honest. Uh, it's pretty pretty small, two, two tapes wide. Um, yeah, I mean, I can see why you'd want this. It's probably going to sound horrible, though, but still. So, not much exciting to tell here. Uh, this is just a Philips F, uh, FC8921, 911, I'm not sure. Uh, pretty half-decent dual cassette deck. There's two things I want to say about this one. First of all, what are these tapes? Look at the, with the diagonal lines. I don't know which tapes these are, but I don't think I've ever seen them here. That's one thing. But then also, this is the reason I don't hate these. They have a rotating head that's stay, when it's not in use, is sort of diagonal. And somehow, these are the only, <laughs> it's really dirty by the way, it needs to clean. Uh, the only auto reverse decks that I know that never have an issue where the head gets hit out of alignment by all of the rotating. It's a pretty good system. These are not bad. They're not great, but they're not bad either. They're well, well executed. This is awesome. It's a Columbia, but I don't think it actually is the same Columbia. Obviously for, I think this is Chinese. I never know Chinese and Japanese. I'm sorry. Uh, little cassette 8-track player with a nice woofer, which is probably a full range unit and a tweeter. Uh, you can probably choose between microphone and the uh, internal level. And this is probably your microphone inputs. And this is your headphone out. It's a cassette tape player. Uh, play forward, stop, reverse. I think it actually has record, judging by this. Uh, but I can't read that, of course. And um, I could I could grab my phone, but I'm using my phone to record the video, so I can't do a, a Google Translate. Um, and your 8-track player. Yeah, awesome. Also says player. Wouldn't be surprised if it can record, because this button... Let me see. Can I... Yeah, I don't see the same symbols here for record and record, so I don't know which is which. Maybe it's dubbing. But I love the way it looks with the with the wooden side panels, and it's just a really good design. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna zoom this out a bit a little because it's very blurry. Uh, some of these photos are really bad, I know. This is a ridiculous design. Now, I don't know, it looks like it has a smart card reader or something, and I'm like, how are you gonna control this? This is bigger than you think because these are RCA plugs, so this is a pretty beefy little thing. Not that little, actually. Here's the whole setup with, as far as I can tell, Huge speakers. Um, this is not a small setup. This is for a party. And 
I, I don't know how it, it, it says no device, so it probably can do something Bluetoothy. This is probably pretty new stuff. I've never seen it before. If you know anything about it, let me know. I'm curious. These are speakers that are built in the UK by a brand that not many people know. Everyone knows uh, uh, Wavdale and Mission, Kef and BMW. JPW, they're actually really good little speakers. If you ever find a pair, you should grab them. They're very nice value for money. You can grab a pair of these in the Netherlands for like 60, 70 euros. It's not a bad little bookshelf, it really isn't. That's all I had to say about those. Cosmic Deluxe, the CO, CO60 Deluxe Mark II. You got your typical controls, select or normal, whatever that is, your source monitor, so your tape loop, your inputs for microphone and line, and your filters. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a small amplifier and it's a pretty cool design. It's been through a bit. Oh, here we go. Select or normal reverse, that's your stereo mode. You can go tape or source, and then you can microphone, phone or aux. That's how it works. So you go, um, sorry, we're mirrored here, right? Let me see, yeah. So you go uh, tape, or if you put that one up, phono or aux. So that's not really a monitoring. Well, maybe it is a monitoring switch, actually. This is uh, a lot. Um, so it's a Sansui RG700. It's got a seven band graphic equalizer. It's got your reverb, which is pointless, but kind of cool. And then it also has an equalizer for your microphone. So, oh no, sorry, for your reverb. So you got a microphone, your reverb equalizer. So you can equalize the reverb and you've got a video sound tape 2 equalizer for the separate video sound tape 2 input. So it's a bit of a sound processor with equalizer and you can plug microphones into it and keyboards. This is the 80s kids. Things were wild. There you go. Video sound in. Multi-dimension. <laughs> the acritology is of the scale. Then someone sold the disco floor. There was a lot of disco floors in this group and yeah. Little portable radios. I always have a weak spot for Iowa, as some of you may know, because I'm using an Iowa ADF 800 as my main deck here. Great deck. I like all three of these. They are small but pretty serious looking. Little Iowa, a little Sony with super clear sound and best recording quality. I bet you that's a lie. In the US, they would sue you for saying that. And a National, which is a Matsushita company. So Panasonic, National and Technics are the sort of the same company. Uh, little Cassette radio. I'm, I'm assuming the National is the best choice, but I really like the little IOI. It's like a Walkman with speakers bolted onto it. Very cute. Look at them. The RX FS21 is the National. That's the only one I can read. I like the, the red handle with Sony on it, on the, on the Sony. And yeah, this is just a cute thing. They're actually in pretty good shape as well. Lafayette Media Ready 4000. PCM CIA, Firewire, USB, composite in, smart card. What is this? It is actually just a computer. It's a computer with a 40 gig hard drive, which sort of ages it 2000. 2000? No, but a bit newer, 2001, 2002. Probably like a, a Pentium uh, 3, maybe just for device. Um, yeah, VGA out. Pretty useful, actually, if you want to digitize stuff, because it also has, does it have video in? Yeah, S video in and video in. Actually, Grabbing one of these is not a bad idea if you want to digitize old videotapes because you, because you got your Firewire, you got your USB. It's probably going to be slow as heck, but as long as it's able to capture, you know, TV resolution, you're there. Pretty cool machine, honestly. And it's obviously Lafayette isn't what it used to be with the tube amps they used to make. Uh, Lafayette amplifier. Lafayette used to make some really good stuff back in the day. I've actually had quite a few of these little amps. They're super simple uh, solid state amps, but they do sound pretty good. Lafayette also made way more serious stuff and some of it's actually very, very uh, desirable. Uh, not all though. I think this is a pretty serious one actually. Yeah, awesome. Uh, back to the photos. Sharp twin mechanism. You may wonder how is this twin mechanism when there's one door? The tapes are behind each other. How cool is that? Actually works really well and it's a bit narrower that way. You've got more space for your speakers. It's a pretty cool device. These Pioneers, I don't think that knob's supposed to be on there. That's a knob from a different, probably still Pioneer, but still. This is a pretty good series. They're bloody ugly, but they actually sound pretty good. And then there's a fat ass can with, with your big VU meters and your, your tuning, tuning meter. And this is a pretty nice looking uh, can with receiver, actually. I don't mind that at all. Yep, is a Technic Stereo. I actually had that power amplifier at some point. This is Western Market as well. Um, pretty good, it's the little rig. It's like a, it's like a, Portable radio with a, with a, oh, what the heck? 
So I had that power amplifier, but this is not a power amplifier. This is just a, an all-in-one that ma that's made to look like exactly that power amplifier and that cassette deck looks exactly like that separate cassette deck. It's like all of these three components are also sold separately, but they're in one device now, so they're probably not the same, just looking the same. I'm really curious how serious this is. I, I, do, like, uh, I do like the looks a lot. Loads of radios. I didn't catch that. Could you try again? No, Siri. I, it caught, I do like the look a lot, so that's great. Um, so, a load of, um, of, of, of portable radios. Here's that, that Technics, here's that Twin Deck uh, Sharp. And here's a really cool Akai. I think there's a photo coming of that soon, I'm not sure. First, the Toshiba, is that the same pile? Yeah, here, uh, I'm not sure. Here it is, yeah. The Toshiba Bomb Beat. I forget to keep command clicked when I zoom. The Toshiba Bomb Beat. <laughs> the RO2. It's a uh, loudness, volume, balance, tone. Weird, auto reverse, one cycle, continuous, manual. Manual, what, reverse? I think so. A cool machine, absolutely a cool machine. It's missing a button, it's got stereo microphones. Pretty awesome. Uh, here's the bomb beat and on top of it is a Sanyo with very colorful buttons and I love a sticker like this after all these years. Stereo sound, uh, it better do. Two microphones, tweeter, woofer, nice. Here's the Akai, that's a, that's a serious machine. The aj 480 fs um, you got your band selector, which doesn't look original. You got your stereo mono mode, which doesn't look original. Some of these knobs are not original, but yeah, awesome machine. Uh, it's playing uh, Bach, uh, two condenser mics, tweeter woofer, nice looking scale that looks a lot like the uh, Akai receivers from that time. I hope I'm getting this right. Is it the AAR20? No, it's not. Um, yes, it is. See? So the scale actually goes into the knob, so there's a bit of a, of a downwards motion here. And you see the same thing going on here. Uh, this is older, but I can see where they got the design hint. Uh, there's a screwdriver in it, because antenna. Uh, I like this thing, man. Two-way four speaker. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I wondered if anyone knew about this. So these are Bombino digital video things. Um, they are VCDs. Are they just the VCDs like we had back in the 90s here? Um, I really like the packaging. It's like a cheap sleeve, but it's it's just 2007. Video CD was long gone then here, but uh, also is this in her nose? That's pretty large. I'm not sure if that's a cultural thing or if it's of any meaning. I definitely don't mean to be insensitive. I never saw it before, but uh, it now stood out to me. But it's, yeah, it's a little video disc in a, in a paper sleeve. And here's another one. Loafer. Um, that's a shoe to me, but... Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's another one of those video discs. Also, it's shot on a Realme uh, by a guy named DJ, 9 Pro. So that's a phone. Now, this is something I think we had here as well, but I never saw it in real life. Love the power switch. This little red thing flips around, so it turns red or not red. It's purely mechanical. Uh, this is a battery-powered um, microphone preamplifier. So you can plug in your microphone or your guitar into your stereo, 3D RCA inputs. There's some stuff behind it as well. That looks like a pretty serious speaker, but it's hard to tell. Uh, it's a good idea because I never really got why you want all the microphone inputs on, a, on a, an amplifier. This, I think, is a more subtle solution. What happened here? So we got some speakers. Now, this one's all right. It still has everything. These mid-range units are just gone. It's like someone took a knife to them. Uh, that's not going to sound great anymore, but I thought it was kind of impressive how how uh, ruined they are now the back also took a bit of a beating these are all supposed to look like this they're the same speakers um moisture man is such a massive issue in uh, in in many of those countries and uh, this is what happens if stuff gets moist it's really sad um someone built the thing we got a piezo tweeter some i think pioneer car full range and a woofer um Sometimes something like this sounds remarkably okay. Like not good, but you're like, <laughs> I could listen to this. I'm not sure if this is one of those cases because they probably just had a case and some speakers, but at least it sort of makes sense. The placement makes sense. If your means are limited and you have this stuff laying around, I think this is a pretty good way to implement it. I also like that it's fabric uh, because of uh, diffraction. It's probably gonna do less of that now. 
And then also, if you just fill these with some dampening material and you just wedge a block of wood in it or a like a part of, a, of a, a broomstick, just to create some rigidity, you can really upgrade these speakers to something that is enjoyable. Um, I applaud these kind of ideas, even if it's not going to sound good to my ears, I still think someone really tried to make something here. And yeah, it's, it's cool, I like it. Otto, power amplifier. Here's a trio below this. That's a, that's a Kenwood in the, in the, 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 the West. Here's a big Sanzui amplifier. There's some serious gear in the background. And here's an Otto DCP77 power amplifier. I never heard of the brand, but it looks pretty serious. Uh, and here's an Onkyo that I've never seen before. I don't think we had Onkyo back in those days. It started a bit later in Europe. Looks like your typical Japanese uh, amplifier. Looks good, it's probably going to sound fine because Onkyo does a pretty good job. It's very deep too, so this is probably going to be an okay amp. And here's a... We've had a, we've had Kenwood from this series, but I've never seen this one. This has all of the stuff that that is more popular in Asian countries, where they like a more in-your-face approach with lights and buttons. I like what they did here though. I wish more amps did this. I know Quad sort of did it and Luxman, but not many cheaper brands. Um, it's got a parametric equalizer. You can choose whether your um, bass control goes from 100 hertz to, is this four kilohertz? That's not really bass anymore, okay. And your highs go from something to something as well. I like that. I like a parametric equalizer because let's be honest, a bass and treble button just does something, but you can't really choose. It doesn't match your room. It doesn't match your speakers. It's way more sensible to have, excuse me, a parametric equalizer like this. Um, Cool little amp, no idea what it is otherwise, I don't know it, but it's a cool amp. So I saw this one, and I know these pioneers, but what stood out to me is this arm. This is never gonna match with the groove, is it? It's way too long. So I googled it, and I'll show you what it's supposed to look like in a sec, but can we just, F for respect, appreciate this. I love that they did this. It's fake, of course. It's just uh, some sticker, but I really like the look of it. You may as well disco your record player up. Now, these are great record players. I forgot the model number, PL45 or so. Can't read it anywhere now. Uh, as you can see, this is a Sanzui head shell, <laughs> and that sort of gives it away. This is the head shell it's supposed to have. It's supposed to have this, this uh, kink in it, um, and this one doesn't. So, yeah, that's why it looks so ridiculous. And, of course, you can't play records like this. I mean, it will play, but it's a really bad idea. So you need the original head shell for this one or twist your cartridge a lot. But even then, you would have to put it somewhere here and then twist it like so. <laughs> this one's even twisted the other way. So this isn't great, but it's a, it's a beautiful record player, has to be said. Here's a cool setup. We got your car sub, you got some Pioneer speakers, and then this, this booster with some SD card, USB media player. That's cool, man. If you, even if, if it even have, has Bluetooth, if you happen to have some car speakers lying around and you have some boxes, you can just create something like this. This is obviously homemade because these are very much not straight. Uh, awesome. Really awesome. This is, uh, yeah, this works for me. There's a lot of car audio in the back anyway. Um, and someone's gotten creative and uh, yeah. The only thing that bothers me is that this one's lower than that one. They should have probably measured that out, but <laughs> why not? Search on WF. Is there more of this? Yeah, okay, let's start with this one. It's a sharp search or WF. <laughs> it can probably music search. Uh, your microphone inputs, your headphone outputs, you got your probably volume and your some equalizer settings. It's all in an Asian script again. FM, FM stereo needs to be separated and AM radio cassette. Weird combination of words there, but it's a really cool looking thing and it's actually looking pretty modern. I wouldn't be surprised if this was from like the, the mid 2000s. Uh, it's probably newer than you think. But there it is, the Sharp GF757. I think there's some stuff missing here. I think it's supposed to be plexiglass here. It appears to be there. But this looks like soft touch controls as well. Um, I think this is a pretty serious one, to be honest. Whoa, a sang song. Well, I'm sure it sang a song at some point, but now it's very troubled. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is super cheap. Uh, a CD DVD amplifier. So you got this, this thing here and looking at this, that could be the same thing. Do you see that? Yeah, it's probably something. So this is a, a generic Bluetooth speakers, <laughs> Bluetooth um, module that plays TF. So micro SD, USB, Bluetooth. 
If these things are reliable, if they don't break, this is actually not a bad thing to have laying around just to build something with. So your volume, your balance, your trouble, <laughs> and your bass. Uh, one non-original button, but it's very flashy. A level meter and apparently 450 watts. This is what's on the inside. So the power supply is JBL. And then, yeah, there's two relatively large capacitors. So some of this is pretty, pretty serious, weirdly. It's a very weird thing, and it's probably going to be not great, but I do, I do appreciate the, uh, the creativity. Oven, there's an oven. That makes you some nice pizzas, that, that South Star oven. It's a South Star oven. My deck is from North Star, so they, they should go together. Uh, these you also had here. Little car boosters, always like this. Always thought, should I, should I get one just for a laugh, but I don't need it. Uh, always like the way these look. JVC AXR97, big ass amplifier with your equalizer. Um, this is more normal stuff for me, but it's, it's a really cool amp. And I, I always think it's a bit sad that these JVCs from this era, they always look meh. They don't, they, they don't work looks wise in, in this time. They look so 80s and over the top, but they're always pretty good amplifiers. They always work and they sound pretty damn good. So don't avoid this series of JVC, it's good. And here's the insides. It's dirty, but nice transformer, nice condensers, discrete. There's nothing wrong with an amp like this. If you want to not spend too much money, you can grab these for like 60, 70 bucks here. It's a good, it's a good deal. It's a good amp. ESM speakers, FSM speakers. I actually don't know. I think ESM. Whatever they are, they look like missions, uh, but bigger. And uh, these are the same, right? Yeah. And um, I think it's a C tweeter. I don't know, but these look like like proper speakers. These are probably going to sound just fine. And I don't know the brand ESM, so if you know something about it, let me know. Little Sanzui, not that little actually. Uh, that's a D570. It's a pretty serious cassette deck. Is that a three head one? Yep. You got your monitor switch here. You got your programmable stuff with your compu. I don't know what. Uh, really cool design this deck. I really like the way this looks. Would grab this if I found it. It's a, it's a good looking machine. And here's another pile that is, um, again, the stuff we didn't get here. So let's start at the top. Akai AA something something solid state stereo receiver. Misses a lot. I love the design. Um, some fat. And um, yeah, it's probably beyond repair, but it's at least for, for me. But it's, it's a pretty cool looking, relatively small receiver. That said, this is relatively big. A National Panasonic, it said here, I think. Um, Cassiever, cassette receiver, love the color. Not sure if this is supposed to be two different colors, uh, but I, uh, I do appreciate the design of that one. And then at the bottom, another Onkyo. Now again, moisture is a massive issue here. Uh, all of the text is falling off. It's, it's a bit sad, but maybe it still works. I wonder what was once here in these holes. Maybe someone made some handles there. I don't know. I don't think that's original. Oh, there's probably needs to, oh, I can see it. There's probably a plastic faceplate here that's going around the volume knob and uh, because th there's nothing here now. This is all open. So yeah, a pretty beefy looking Onkyo. Uh, there's something missing here. Onkyo receiver that we never had here, but it looks promising. Here's the back. That's what I mean. Three pairs of speakers and it's the TX4500. Let me see what it's supposed to look like. Onkyo TX4500. And, oh, did I miss the X or did it correct me? I wish Google didn't do that. There we are. Oh my goodness, is that the same thing? Is that actually the same receiver? No, it's not. The model numbers are sometimes a bit weird. I'm trying to figure out which one it is, but I can't really. Was it an eight? No, so I don't know which one it is. Apparently it's not a TX4500, but it's a big one. Because this is also a big one. How many inputs does that Onkyo have? Three tape inputs, you got your Dolby unit, your phono, your auxiliary, pre-out main in. Very serious amplifier, that. Um, yeah, and here's the here's National Panasonic RA6500. Cool stuff. And obviously, again, you can see from, um, from this, moisture is a major, major issue. It's all messed up. Here's the Akai, and here's a close-up of the... Um, national and then we end up here and this is a Sanzui again that I've never seen before 
a small amplifier with some fader, probably for echo or something, or maybe it's some, no, it's an amplifier, I can see the word here. Um, the cool design, love the colorful buttons. This is pointless, but awesome. Uh, looks like something that could have been Akai made, but it's, it's Sanzui. How long have we been doing this? 35 minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna chop this one in half. Chop, chop. Uh, this was a video of me going through random equipment that you usually don't see here and forgetting about my coffee, which is now very cold, mm, modern. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. It was very enjoyable for me because I didn't know much of this stuff. I'm looking at the timer, it's an hour and six minutes now. I uh, divided this one into two at 35 minutes, so that was a good call. And uh, yeah, if you enjoyed this one, I can go to this group every couple of months and see if I find more. If in all of this, I said something that is somehow offensive to um, cultures where this stuff is being used, please let me know because I don't mean to. I'll be happy to apologize. And also I'll be happy to say I didn't know. So, you know, now I know. Um, but I've been trying to be respectful of the situations this audio was in uh, while still having a bit of fun with it because, you know, sometimes misery can be entertaining as long as people manage to live a relatively happy life. But of course, uh, let us all not forget how lucky we are to live in a climate and in a country where we have uh, not this much, much moisture and heat um, because it has massive downsides, you can see, and where we have the uh, disposable income to replace stuff that is broken because much of this is still being sold. People are still doing offers and that means that that is what they can, can afford and that is unfair. Um, I hope these people find the stuff they look for and sell the stuff they hope to sell and uh, I'm looking forward to talking to, to you all in a, a future video. Have a great night.